Hello and welcome back to the channel and in today's episode I will try to show you how to create the most simple multiplayer game that you can imagine. So let me start and show this by running two instances and as you can see it will spawn two windows. A one will um, be a host, the other one will be just a standard peer that joins the host. I will provide any kind of names and here I click hosts, here I click join and I have some information about players being connected and I start the game and as you can see I can control both windows as in multiplayer. Additionally this game will work um, on your LAN uh, home network so you can play with your spouse or with your friend uh, but also you can host it on dedicated server but I will not tell you about hosting it uh, on dedicated server um, again this is going to be as simple as possible for all of us to start working on multiplayer games So the starter project is the uh, standard ping pong project that we did previously. If you don't know how we uh, got this project, you can just watch the video uh, on uh, on my channel about how to make um, how to make ping pong. This is one of the first videos. Uh, alternatively, what you could do is probably just go to um, just go to ping pong godot uh, the code will be in the description i mean the url will be in the description and this is like the starting point okay so what we have to do first is set up the multiplayer lobby and this might be a little bit complicated but i will try to explain it um, as good as i can so i will start by creating new scene uh, and this is going to be um, just a control scene. I can call this uh, multiplayer lobby. Let's go to 2D. Uh, and we need a few things here. So uh, let me just go and add a button here. Why can't I click you? Oh, OK. So let's search for a button uh, and I will call this post button. Let's copy this. This is going to be join button. Then another one will be start server. Oops, start server button. And we need a line edit which is like a text field you can leave the default name and just uh move those things around let's call this one let's give it a text of host and maybe move this around make it a little bit bigger the placement doesn't really matter in that case then we have a join button also it doesn't have to be beautiful just make it a little bit bigger start server button we don't need to say that it is a button because we know it is and light edit and here we use that to basically specify the user username okay and we have everything that we need for now. So let's go and maybe just run the scene to see how it looks. Go to scenes, save it. Okay, yeah, we can write here, so this is good enough. Let's now uh, add the script and I'll call this multiplayer lobby. And yeah, we can save it in scenes. There will be not, not that many changes. So basically remove everything that we need for now. Maybe move that. Okay, and 
sorry. There's one thing that we have discussed, have to discuss. Making multiplayer games is way more complicated than making uh, standard single player games. And this is because of many reasons, right? You have your host. I can make it okay. And then also what you have. are your other peers and peer is just a player or a machine that is joining the multiplayer game and you have you can have multi dose of those and they all have to synchronize with the host because host is like a you know like a king and he's hosting the game and he is basically the only one that knows the true state of the game. So while working and writing your code, right, you don't only worry about what is going on in your own computer, like in single player, but you also have to maintain that synchronization between, between the machines. Godot gives us some classes and some nodes that help with that, yet still uh there is much that has to be uh, done and maintained to uh, even for a simple game like a ping pong to maintain the proper state of the game because both of the players have to know where the ball is and what uh, the score is and where is the enemy's paddle right so this is going to be way harder than a standard game and of course we have to create our lobby so let's start by uh, let's start by making the ready function and we will actually get the references reference references to everything that we need so join button server button and line edit and uh, let's create uh, the functions for the uh, presses. So on post button press. And again, this is the simplest lobby that you could have for two players. Start server button rest connect on start server button rest perfect then uh, of course we need to define those functions so on host button rest um what else do we need we let let it pass for now we need on join button rest let it pass and we need um, on start server button rest so this will basically handle um handle our button presses but then we also need to handle in a set of functions the multiplayer uh, callbacks so there's a global class called multiplayer that gives us uh, insight into what is going on when the host or peer state changes so one thing that we would like to know is <coughs> sorry when the peer is connected so on peer connected we also would like to know when the peer has disconnected peer disconnected uh, we also would like to know when connected server happens
and when the connection failed. Okay, let's create those functions. Mm, I'm pure connected. On here, this connected on connected to server on connection failed. Okay, so let's first uh, handle uh, the uh, hosting so on peer pressed and we will need the variable to hold the peer so everything about the player whether he's hosting or joining uh, we will also need a few variables here one is gonna be max players this is the game for two players it's going to be two and i believe godot currently supports up to 42 players in a peer-to-peer -peer connection but i might be wrong export var address and this is the address of the host and in our case this is going to be zero one so this is ip address which is like a loop back to you so let me explain that a little bit oops uh let me erase everything here and as you can tell i upgraded from paint to mirror so you have your own computer right and every single time you're trying to connect to any website or any in-house device or any game server game server your computer must know its location in the whole world wide web and this is identified by IP number which historically is a set of four numbers ranging from 0 to 255 for uh, IP power 4 and then it is extended to with IP power 6 doesn't matter but if you um, would like to check for any any address you could just go to your terminal and say ping google.com and you will see that it has some kind of address and this is the format for um file six right but if i would ping for example i don't know uh vpl which is very very well established polish site you can see that it has its own ip address in the format of ip file 4 but then your own computer also knows its own address right which is like home address so you can reference your own machine with one two seven zero zero one or this also translates to i believe this is uh, you also have your own address in your own home web right uh, and this can be then any number and also this is specified as a special string called local host right so this three and this can be different number are pretty much the same and this is a look back to your own machine okay so this is going to be our home address okay so what happens when we decide to host a game first we create um multiplayer peer which is 
enet a net multiplier peer new so we instantiate it we check whether we are able to create a server sorry uh, and this might fail and return an error create server on a port and we define a port here and you might ask what is a port right can we create new board um, so what is a port this is very important to understand the multiplayer so you have your own machine so like the local host and there will be a different uh basically processes running on your computer right and uh if they can be accessed externally at least some of them they will be running on a port so port is basically like an in out entry on your local machine and uh, and a combination of address and a port um, is like the way for other machines to access something running on your computer because you don't want all of the machine to be accessible for other processes like for um, for example you have player one and player two on different laptops and machines and you'd like them to connect but but you don't want player two to access your photos or videos basically all of your machine so you're running your game and saying that it is running on port and there's a process in our example that's gonna be uh, the game process running and then that other player can access not your whole machine but only a part of it a process by knowing the port on which the process is running so this is basically saying hey somebody else can access that but only what is running on that port okay so going back we will define the port and this is 8080 this is historically a set of, of for um for numbers right for example i don't know 8080 or this is going to work too but 8080 is like pretty much standard so here we create the server and we say is it okay I mean is there any problem if there is we say cannot post and we say what the error was and we return if we can then we say get host and Typically in a game, when you're running a game, multiplayer game, the data is being sent in a set of packages. It's not like a constant connection, but you extend the packets of data that wait, for example, for kilobytes. And to make everything run more smoothly and to be more efficient, you'd like to compress the data so it runs faster and takes less space so what we can say is specify the compression here you don't have to do it but it's it's good to do it so call compress and you can specify and net connection compress range folder there are other uh, algorithms to compress the data as you can tell but this is pretty much a standard one and then we can say multiplayer set multiplayer peer oops uh, let's try again multiplayer set multiplayer peer to peer 
Okay, uh, let's see. Yes. And then we can say print waiting for other player. Okay, so let's see whether this runs. So I will click. Yeah, and we can see that we started the we started the uh, host the server properly. So this is good. Okay, so let's now handle joining our player. So we'll say here is also equal to e net multiplayer peer new. And we'll say peer create client, not the server, on an address with a port. I will also set the compression so I can basically just copy that here. Right, and then in the end, I can say multiplayer uh, set set um, multiplayer here to peer. Okay, so this is going to happen on a machine that is hosting, and this is going to happen on a machine that is joining as a client. Okay. Um, we can like stop that. Uh, let's see. On peer connected, I will just print some information. Player connected, and here I will get ID, which is the identifier of a player. And I can. This is going to be a number, so I will turn it to string. Then here. player disconnected uh, plus string ID and then uh, oh yeah the ID is in current scope and then print connected to server And here we'll say couldn't connect. Okay, so let's see what will be triggered here in that flow. So I can go to editor and say run multiple um, instances too. And one instance will be working as a host, the other one as a client. So let's run this and we should have two separate things. So let's start by host and we say waiting for other player and then let's click join and we have player connected, player disconnected, connected to server, player one connected, player one disconnected. Okay. So player connected one the identifier of one is always a host. The other number is like, let's do this, is like any other, um, any other peer that would like to play with us. So one is always uh, a server, right? Okay. Uh, so, uh, let's see what we can do next. Um, basically, what we would like to do is start the game whenever we press start, right? So, let me see. What we need to do is actually, um, we need to actually save the information about the players that are hosting and connecting to use further in our game. So what I will do is I will go to project settings, auto load, 
and I will create a very simple script uh, that I will call game manager. Uh, game manager. Let's add it. Let's save it. And that's going to be global variable. It's going to be very simple. We'll use it only to store information about our players in a dictionary. And here we'll store information like ID and the name of the player. So we'll reference that. Okay. So what we will need is a way to send that information about the play player. And to do that, I will create a special function, maybe not so special. So we will say send player info and it will take name and ID. And here where the problem begins, because we will have, let me get rid of that. We will have two machines, the host and the player or the, the other peer, the client, right? And both has, have to have the same set of information about players. So that dictionary that we created has to be the same here and here because the state of the game has to be the same on both machines so whenever we set the players send the set information we have to do it on both machines right and remember our game that we are writing its code is only running on one machine either the host or the client so we have to have a way to call the functions like everywhere and for this there's a special annotation in godot or special decorator just like export and it's called rpc and rpc stands for remote procedure call and i'm not gonna bore you with, with all of the architecture and history and diagrams of how it works but basically it means that using those functions those functions can be called on other peers and on the host so those functions rpc functions are used basically to synchronize the state of the game between the machines and this is making multiplayer games definitely harder but whenever you are calling a function you have to ask yourself should this be synchronized between the machines or is this happening only on that um, that machine that is currently running the game okay so um example of that is going to be go here a very well known game of tarkov or escape from tarkov which is uh, a looter shooter and um there's uh, there's a difference when it comes to how sound is being synchronized so for example the sound, uh, I believe, of going from standing to crouch is being played only on your own machine, so your enemies don't hear it. But the, uh, the uh, sound of reloading is being played with RPC mean that everybody can hear you reload, right? So basically, RPC is 
is being used when you the answer to the question is this happening for everybody all of the machines that are playing is yes then you have to use rpc and if the answer to that is no meaning this is only happening on one machine it doesn't have to be synchronized we do not use rpc okay so let's get back to coding and here are a few things that uh, we can specify so any peer mean, means the function is going to be um, called on every single peer and also call local is used whenever the host is also a peer which is playing the game and if we go to um, high level multiplayer let me find it yes mode any peer clients are allowed to call remotely useful for transferring user input and then call local the function can be called on local people useful when the server is also a player and then there's transfer mode but this is like a separate thing and i try to keep it simple so if game manager players um, i call this player or players players okay has id so we did not set the information about that player yet then game um another and i should say if here players under key id and this is just basic dictionary the name is the name come on the id is the id okay and then we also have to check is current machine a server and if so for every player that we currently have we have to um, we have to send this information as an rpc to synchronize and i okay and then on the host button pressed so here we say send player info line edit text and we can get and we can get get unique id so see that on the host button we are calling that function locally right and then because it is a server it sets its, itself into the dictionary and then also informs other players about that okay and then um then we have the synchronization of all the players And how do you, we synchronize other players that are not hosts? Well, when we do on connected to server, we say send player info and we call it as RPC ID function. And we call it on a server because we specify the ID. So RPC ID performs a remote procedure call on specific peer ID. And since we're passing one, right as you remember one is always the uh, the host and you say the host hey somebody new joined uh, and we do line edit text multiplayer get unique id okay 
Uh, let me see. Do we need anything else? Uh, we will also need the way to start the game. Okay. So let's try running this now. And let's say A. B. And do host. And uh, let's see. Check for infinite recursion in your script. Okay. Let's see. Oh, and I know we shouldn't just call local, right? Because that should um, not really happen. Let's try again. Yeah, waiting for other player. Okay, and then I can press B and join. And we should be pretty much good to go. So the other thing is to start the game. So on start server button pressed, we'll just start game, create that function and say RPC. And we need that to start on any peer and also be callable locally because the host is also a player and he has to start the game. So start game and we will need our main scene reference here so main we'll say scene is equal to load um instantiate instantiate get three and we'll replace the current scene uh, at child and we will hide the current scene and of course pass the scene here so let's try and see whether we are able to switch the scenes so again this is the host now we're joining and we're starting the server and yeah, and what we're what we have now right are just two games running like on two separate machines but if we switch to that window we control that uh, client and here we control the host of course this is not the aim what we'd like to achieve is actually to be able to play against each other so let's close that but this is how you can set up the simplest possible lobby for two players thank you and let's go to the next section all right so now we have to do some work in our main scene to set it up for the multiplayer version uh, first thing we will get rid of the enemy paddle and player paddle because they will not be set directly in the scene but rather will instantiate them uh, and um, let's see we'll change the main script that's going to be the first thing that we will do so we need the reference to the paddle scene here and just the standard paddle is enough will not use enemy paddle so yeah this is a paddle scene and we will say that this is packed scene so what we should do on the very start we need to iterate um on the um game players that we have and this is in the global script the auto loaded script and set them in their proper positions so what i will do is i will add a new node to here and i will call these spawn positions and the naming is going to be pretty important here but it may seem strange at first this is going to be zero and then we will have 
one and this will reference the indexes of our players zero and one because we have two players so let's set the set this in the uh, right place so this is going to be in minus thousand and the other one is going to be uh i believe a thousand yes okay so we know the spawn positions and what we can do actually is to access them easily go to node groups manage groups and we can add spawn uh, player spawn player spawns okay and i can go here and select both of these and add them to that group okay so now i can see these are now in player spawn groups and it will make it easy for us to access them going back to our script i can now iterate over our players so game manager players and i can say current player so the player on the local machine really is player scene paddle scene instantiate and we will set the name of that player to the id that we passed right and this is going to be that number right assigned by the host and i will add child current player and for spawn in get three now i will access that group get notes in group player spawns i'll say if spawn name is equal to index right i will say uh, we need or we need colon here current player global position is equal to spawn global position so spawn um me the player whether this is host or not and also spawn my enemy and set the proper position for me and for him and then we'll just uh, increment the index and let's see whether that works uh, so we need to run the lobby first say a as a host b as the client okay and now you can see that for some time i can control both my player and the enemy so this is the problem we are now controlling both which is not ideal of course okay so what we have to do is um basically this is okay this is okay what we need to do now is handle our paddles so let's open the paddle scene and the code and there will be a little bit of a work to do here it's not hard but we have to take time explaining it okay so first thing we have to synchronize the position that paddle controlled by local player has on the other machine right so naturally if i have a paddle and i move it on my local machine so this is going to be local and this is to gonna be let's call this i don't know other right if i have my paddle here and i start moving it down 
somehow, some way, it ha also has to move down the very same amount on the other computer, right? So our velocity that we assign here has to be as assigned and synchronized on the other machine. And to achieve that synchronization of basic properties, um, we can use a special node given by Godot that simplifies that process, which is multiplayer synchronizer. And here we have new tab called the replication. And the replication is a state of replicating the state of the game across peers. And we could find a property to sync for our rigid body. So here we will find listed all of the properties of the rigid body to D and the node it extends um, that we could synchronize across our peers. And there's one problem. To make it really work and how our movement works currently is by setting the linear velocity. But there's going to be one problem here because if I click on rigid body here and I start to search for velocity, I could synchronize in our velocity here. But this might be proven a little bit problematic. At least I found it to be uh, when I was implementing that before. So alternatively, what we could do is export other variable and then we could replicate that. And even now, you can see here at the top, we are able to synchronize the speed because this is being exported. So what I could do is say export bar goal velocity and say this is vector two. And then we are able to synchronize that. So let's do this. And we have to do two other things. Basically, we have to tell who is in control of that node really. Because remember, we display both nodes on a local machine, but only one is being controlled by the player that is playing on the local machine, right? So maybe to visualize this a little bit better, let me get rid of that. So this is the local machine and then there is other machine. And for local machine, for player one, this is his paddle and he's controlling it and then that puddle is being replicated on the second player. And then for the second player, he is controlling his own puddle, of course, and it is being replicated on the player one. So we need to say, hey, who is controlling that? And we can do this by saying, uh, let's get reference to multiplayer synchronizer. We can say multiplayer synchronizer set multiplayer authority. If we go to here, set the nodes multiplayer authority to the peer with a given peer ID. Um, the multiplayer authority is the peer that has the authority over the node on the network. Okay? So we will say that the authority of this string name to int right and um, we can do this because when we're creating our node we set the name to the id so it's easy to to transfer alternatively we could just pass it as a variable but we can use the name here to transfer it so if you don't like to Mm, use a name or you would like set the name to player one on player two you could just do current player id or authority 
ID and set it right here as a number without playing around with setting the name. So that's going to work too. Okay, so we now know who has the authority here. And then our physics process is going to behave differently whether we have the authority or not, because currently we are moving both nodes with our input right here. And that should happen only if we have the authority. So let's write multiplayer synchronizer, get multiplayer authority. And if it's not equal to multiplayer, get unique ID, then return. Okay, so now only one player will be able to move his proper uh, paddle. So let's uh, let's run our multiplayer lobby. And previously both paddles were moving. Host join start server. So now I'm moving only this, and this is of course breaking right global position on a ball instance of course um but let's run this again real quick post join and now i will focus on that window and you will see that only one puddle is moving right the one that i am really controlling but of course if i will if i am able no it hangs but then the puddle here we maybe try and show it to you really let's maybe make that window smaller you will see that the left paddle here i am controlling but it's not being properly synchronized yet here so only this paddle will be moving right we can see here this is not working okay and i can basically Get rid of that because this is actually breaking things. Um, so again, how to synchronize those properly? Here we calculate the linear velocity, and I would say that the goal velocity is the linear velocity. And then this value, remember, we set it for replication here. It is being replicated as a goal velocity. So then I can just go in here and say a linear velocity is equal to goal below. Oh, sorry, if this is not here, of course, this should be here. So basically how this reads is if this is not, if I'm not controlling that, it should be synchronized over the internet with the goal velocity variable that is being synchronized. If this is my node, I am controlling it, I have authority over it, then just simply let me move it and then assign the goal velocity. So let's see whether this is going to work. So let's run the multiplayer lobby. A host, B join and start server. And as I am moving here, you can see that the position of that node is being synchronized on both peers. And if I switch to that, maybe put here, you can see that now the position of our paddles is being synchronized here and here but what is definitely not synchronized is the position of our ball so we handle the paddles and in the next section we will handle the ball okay uh we have our paddles working now it's time to handle the synchronization of the ball 
and it will be a little bit more complicated because we also have to synchronize the um the the collisions so let's start uh by uh let's see by also exporting goal velocity and we can say that this is empty vector 2 adding a synchronizer and add property to sync ball is going to be goal velocity or sorry in this case this is going to be um this is going to be position so let's remove that and we will sync on position okay and then let's see we have to write our first function which is going to be reset ball so we will need um, a start velocity variable here which we will for starters assign to zero vector to zero and then we will check if is multiplayer authority and if so we'll basically copy all of that here so we'll randomize okay and is multiplayer authority returns true if the local system is a multiplayer authority of this node right so we will start that um only on will randomize it only on your own computer on your local computer uh then we can do oh actually we'll write it here so here we'll pass the start velocity and that's gonna be factor two and we will say global position is equal to vector two zero velocity is set to start velocity and also goal velocity is equal to start velocity okay but we will make that function rpc and say that this can be called on any peer and call local okay and then we'll write another RP, another rpc function that we'll use to bounce the ball let's say velocity is velocity bounce normal times speed multiplier okay and we will here say start ball rpc with the start velocity so we'll start it everywhere right and then this is also going to be rpc because we have to bounce everywhere so how this works is we synchronize the position of the ball every single frame but then we also synchronize the bounces and we synchronize the start of the ball right and this will allow us to uh, let's see we'll reset the ball to keep the state of the ball consistent across peers but also we have to change our uh, physics a little bit. So if it's not true that we have the authority, we will just return. And else 
we say go velocity is equal to velocity and we say that if we have a collision we move and collide with the velocity and ball speed and delta and if we have collision then we bounce rpc collision get normal and i believe yeah that's it we synchronize the bounce we synchronize the start of the ball rest is being handled by the multiplayer synchronizer so let's see whether that works host join and start server and oh reset uh reset game state is not going to work but we will fix this reset game state basically it will call ball reset ball let's try this again and the most important thing is whether the ball is synchronized and it's not moving at all okay so we have some errors note not found okay we can get rid of that because we don't need it try this again a b all join starts server and it's not moving oh and i know where the problem is of course here we would like to use the start velocity when we reset the ball so let's run this again a b host join start server and as you can see it almost works okay something is wrong with our bounces yeah so uh, i changed something before just remember to return if the multiplayer is not the authority here okay and yeah uh, what we have right now is the is the working game right and even the points are being calculated correctly because we we collect calculate they're gonna be the same um on all peers because we calculate them the same and the detection of the um of the edge where the ball hits outer bounds of the screen is the same so yeah this is basically uh the ping pong, ping pong multiplayer but let me show you one thing because now i'm just trying two instances oops i'm just trying two instances right on one computer and it may be that you would like to play with your kid or, or spouse or whatever and how to achieve this and how to do this basically on your machine uh that's gonna be played as a host you open a terminal and you can do this by just pressing windows or here going to terminal and you have to find the ip so the address that we have here of your host computer uh, of your host machine in your local home network and to do this we write ip config and you're gonna find that number that is going to be uh specified here as ip4 address and you when running this project on the second machine with git.go.install you will just pass it here as an address alternatively what we could do is of course add another line edit here say so this is ip 
address uh, line line edit grab the reference and then say that uh, IP address line edit where do we use it this is the text here and There should be other place is that it i uh, yeah i think yeah i think it is okay and then you can just build the project right and export it and run it on second computer and just um ask the client that is be that is going to be joining your host to specify that number that you will dictate to him. So you will just run it on this host machine and say to, I don't know, Mary, just specify this or Paul, specify this number. I don't know, 29 here. And you will be able to play with, your, with the other person, right? Be wary that this is only going to work if both machines are in the very same network, right? Because there, alternatively, you could use dedicated server for that, but I try to keep it as simple as possible. So yeah, there you have it. This is how you could do the simplest possible multiplayer game on Godot. Thank you, and I see you in the next one.